Hello, and welcome to another edition of Inventor's Quick Tips. Today we are discussing the topic of provisional applications, and more particularly, an example of writing a quick provisional patent application. So let's imagine a hypothetical scenario. We invented an improved serving spoon, which you see here. Now in reality, this is a melon baller used to scoop out chunks of cantaloupe or honeydew, and no, I did not invent this. It's been around for some time, but for the sake of example, we are going to pretend that we invented this. And as you can see, when we squeeze the handles together, a gear spins a rod that spins a blade within the spoon section to help sticky contents like melon chunks or cookie dough pop out of the spoon. So this is an improvement over the prior art scoop, which does not have this feature, and hence food gets stuck in there. So we got notice that there's a big trade show tomorrow, and we are invited. Show up at 11 a.m. to demonstrate our invention, meet with industry leaders, and so on. It's a great opportunity, and we don't want to miss out on it, but we currently don't have a patent application filed or even started for this invention. And the time now is a little after 10 a.m. the day before. So we would have a hard time reaching a professional on such a short notice to uh, complete an application, so we need to balance the risk versus reward. We could certainly skip this trade show and wait until we have a full patent application written and then pursue promotion of the invention, but by then this opportunity may be lost. A compromise might be to write a quick provisional and get that filed today, the day before this trade show, so we can attend the trade show and present the invention, knowing that a provisional patent application is already on file prior to the show. So the main purpose of a quick provisional patent application is to establish proof that we had the invention in our possession before disclosing it to others. So while there is no single correct way to do this, I'm going to show you an example technique on how to get started if you only have a day or some short time to get something written. Since our invention exists, we can start with photos. If it didn't exist, we would start with drawings, sketches, or any CAD illustrations we may have. So I'll start with the front view. I put the spoon on a piece of white paper to get a cleaner background. It's a good idea to include multiple views. Here's a back view. And here is a perspective view that shows the spoon at an angle. Now let's number the figures. For this situation, I will use the perspective view on the right as fig 1, and the front view as figure 2, and the back view as figure 3. So now, let's identify some parts. We'll call the whole thing the apparatus. And now we have two handles. The spoon section, we'll call that a basin. The metal piece that moves to free the contents, we'll call that the blade. Now we have the rod that moves the blade. The gear is attached to the rod. Then we have the toothed rail that engages with the gear. And the spring in between the two handles. We have a shaft portion extending from the handles and the basin is attached to the shaft portion. Another important piece is the pivot point at which the two handles are flexibly joined. So now let's add some numbers. There is no strict rule here but I usually start with the main thing, in this case the apparatus, with the number 100. Then I go by twos to number the other parts. Again, we don't have a lot of time, so we don't want to waste time thinking about the best numbers or order of numbers. As long as the unique parts have unique numbers, it will work for our purposes. So now let's start writing the quick provisional application. We will start with a title, Spoon with Ejection Mechanism to describe our spoon that can eject the food contents. Then a sentence or two for the background. And with the background, I want to take care not to talk about the invention itself in this part. We don't need to say too much here. Just a sentence or two will suffice. I have another video that discusses the background section in more details, and I will put a link to that video in the description. Now let's start with a detailed description. We'll start talking about the parts of the device and use the numbers that we previously defined in our figure. The spoon 100 of disclosed embodiments has a first handle 102 coupled to a second handle 108 via pivot point 116. 
Handle 102 has a shaft portion 118. At the end of the shaft portion 118 is a basin 112 that is convex to contain food. And we continue with more details. A blade 120 is connected to rod 114. Rod 114 is connected to gear 104, which engages with tooth rail 106. Tooth rail 106 is connected to handle 108. When a user squeezes handles 102 and 108 to bring them closer together, the tooth rail 106 causes the gear 104 to spin, causing the blade 120 to move within the basin 112, helping to free the food contents from the basin. Spring 110 disposed between the handles causes the handles 102 and 108 to separate when the user releases the handles. And we, of course, could say more here, but we're just trying to give the general idea. So you wouldn't necessarily be finished here, but we would write a little bit more about each component and how they're connected. Then we want to write one claim. And since this is a provisional patent application, this claim will never get examined and does not need to be perfect. But it is generally considered to be a good practice to include at least one claim in a provisional patent application. And if you look at this claim, I'm pretty much going from left to right, reciting the things I see, handles, rods, gears, etc., and how they relate to each other. Notice that in most cases, a given element is recited in relation to another element. As an example, the rod connects to the blade, the gear connects to the rod, and so on. So we don't just say there is a gear floating out in space, but rather what within the invention the gear interacts with. And then we have the rail engaging with the gear and so on. Now let's list and number our figures. So we have our figures and we've numbered them. Here's figure one, which we already have numbered. And we'll do the same thing for figure two and figure three. Now in this particular example, because the invention is quite simple, most of the parts are shown in all three views. It's always good to have a few views as appropriate, top, bottom, left, right, and a perspective view, just to make sure that the important parts of the invention are shown in at least one figure. For many inventions, some parts are only visible in certain views. So you want to make sure you have all the views you need to show each part that contributes to the invention. So let's go over our application. We have the background. We have a listing of the drawings. We have a detailed description section and at least one claim. Of course, if we have time, we can add more stuff such as listing possible materials, metals, aluminum, steel, copper, plastics, polymers, and so forth for making our spoon. Different sizes for different amounts of food, different types of food, versions for kids and adults, and so forth. How to build a device. Are parts welded, glued, riveted, etc.? Any other variations come to mind? A different blade shape, a different basin shape, etc.? Those are things we can talk about if we have time. So let's summarize about the quick provisional. A quick provisional is usually better than no application at all when imminent disclosure is going to happen. If you find yourself in a situation where there is suddenly a good opportunity to present or discuss an invention, having a quick provisional patent application on file is usually better than disclosing it without any patent application at all. Start by coming up with your figures, labeling the parts, and numbering the parts. Once you've done that, describe the components, and I recommend including at least one claim. This book, which you can get at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or other booksellers, is a well-known book if you want to dig more into what would go into writing a patent application. And again, if there was more time, then there would be more details going into this application. But in this situation, which I have encountered numerous times, having the quick provisional that describes the workings of the invention is better than having nothing at all. Ideally, you want to plan so that a thorough patent application is on file prior to any disclosure of your invention. But sometimes things come up and inventors find themselves in a position where important opportunities present themselves on short notice. And then it becomes necessary to make a best effort with a quick provisional patent application in order to take advantage of those opportunities. 
So hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, please share, like, and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye.